Hey everybody, Sam here. And Angela, and welcome to our channel. Welcome back to another video from our 1988 Palm Harbor single wide mobile home where we started renovating in our bedroom and we are now in our kitchen slash remnants of what the laundry room was. <laughs> remnants, yes. If you guys haven't seen the previous videos leading up to this, there's a list of the full playlist down below that'll show you how this became what it is, what our plan is, and everything from past, present, to future. So in this video, we are going to be replacing floor again, which may sound boring because you've seen us do that a lot. This one is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna be replacing it at our back door here, and we're gonna be fitting it underneath the wall, which we have not done in the rest of the house. With the exception of the front door. True. So this is gonna be a little bit different. So come along, let's go. First things first, we are going to be removing our safety board that we attached to the floor. It's a safety board because, well, we're being safe. It allows us to walk on it while we work and not have a floor. So, out it goes. As we show you guys this process, there is one big thing that I want to emphasize and stress. When you replace your floor like this and you take it off or underneath your wall, your wall is going to be unsupported. My advice to you, number one, is to realize I'm not a professional. I'm not a mobile homeologist. I'm not a, a wall person. I'm just a guy showing you what we're doing here with our house. Number two, take out small sections at a time. When you cut out and remove that old flooring from underneath your exterior wall, do small sections. Cut it out, replace it, move down. Cut it out, replace it, move down. That way the majority of your wall is untouched, not being stressed, it is fully supported, and you're only working with as much as you need to get the job done. Again, not a professional, not professional advice, not even probably wonderful advice, but that's my two cents and I just throw them at you. What we have here is a section of flooring where it used to be our laundry room hallway. It used to be where our washing machine set in our laundry room, it used to be part of our kitchen, our bedroom closet, and it's all been tore back to the floor joists. I've looked and measured the space that I need to put our new subfloor down upon, and it is gonna be able to be done with two sheets of plywood at four foot lengths. That's gonna allow me to put my joints on top of floor joists, span more than at least one floor joist section, which in our case is 16 inches on center. It allow me to have one panel at full 48 inch width, and the other around 32 with some trimming here and there. This way I minimize my cuts, but I give myself the largest pieces of subfloor possible to give a stronger, more coherent floor, a stronger system, and everything tie together, work together, and be as supportive as possible. I'm not a fan of piecemealing subfloor. By far, the best thing you could do is what they do in the factories, lay down full sheets. We don't have that luxury, so the closest you can get to that full sheet while still maintaining your structural integrity, everything being properly supported and safe, that's what I would do. And that's what we're going to do. Welcome to the great outdoors. I'm out here at the back of the house, literally on the other side of our wall where we just were. I'm gonna work on taking the siding off there are about six bajillion little hex screws that are holding this aluminum siding onto this house, but I'm just gonna focus on about 50 in this area where we need to get access to the wall behind it and the old floor to cut everything out and apart. So I'm gonna take these little screws out, probably take some out of the door as well, just to give myself room to work. We're not ripping the siding off the wall, and then we'll start cutting it up, and I'll bring you guys in closer for that next step.
All right, guys, I'm gonna explain what I'm going to do, and then I don't know if we'll be able to show this on camera or not, just because it's all in here behind the aluminum siding. So I don't know, maybe we'll put the camera inside for this. I'm going to run my Sawzall on top of our rim joist. It's the joist that runs around the rim or perimeter of your home at the floor. I'm gonna run around the top of the rim joist to cut any nails and screws holding the old flooring down. And then I'm gonna run the same reciprocating saw blade on the bottom of the bottom plate of my wall to cut all the nails and anything that might be from the wall to the floor. So think of it as a three layer sandwich. We have the bottom plate of the wall, the floor, subfloor itself, and the rim joist. I'm gonna run my blade here to free up the rim joist and here to free up the wall. Then we'll hammer, chisel, I don't know, beat or implore the subfloor out of the way and we'll be able to put the new one in place. All the while, I wanna make sure I don't cut any of our wires, any of our siding, any of our selves, and all that stuff. So, here we go. Let's see if we can get this done. I was going to let the plywood overhang the floor out here outside, put it in place, and then mark where I need to cut, but it, the siding's not going to let us. So I just measured it and I'm going to cut it to length right here. Just making do in the weirdest, awkward positions, but that's how it goes. Your legs it'll get you every time all right now we're ready to fit this thing in here okay we'll try and slide it under here it's not one underneath it Can't you get on out that way Alright, uh -huh. go. Okay. Try the same thing from that edge. Bringing it towards the outside wall. Go! Okay. The wall's on it now. Now we can tap it more easily. Almost there.
All right, everything is buttoned up out here. Now, this is not officially buttoned up because if you watch our other video or you know about us, we're gonna be putting a new door through this wall and it's gonna be over in this area, but that'll be the next step. So we're done out here, which is great because I hear some thunder. So we've got it closed up just in time. Let's go inside, let's check out that floor, check it with Angela and just really enjoy the space now because I think that's just about the floor. No, there's one more piece. All right, let's go inside and finish that floor then. Well, we have gotten a floor. I don't have to worry about falling through anymore. Woo! <laughs> so since we already have the floor down, we decided to tape out, well, Sam decided to tape out where the pantry, the closet, and the doorway is gonna go. And I have to say, it's a lot nicer to see it. You're able to envision it a little bit better. So let's take a look at it. So here you can see, right here is gonna be the edge of the new door. So we are moving it down like a foot a foot and a half it'll be coming this way right here is our pantry it is going to be about two and a half feet, or two feet deep by about four feet wide and one of the biggest awesome things is this nice big space right here it used to only be 28 inches wide but now it's going to be 48 inches wide so it's going to be more than a one butt space here and it'll be a lot more fun to get through to the back door when people come over so we can go out to our outdoor living space out there. You can see right here is going to be a wall and then you can kind of envision this is how big our master closet is going to be which is going to be more than enough for what we need. So it is all coming together. I'm able to see it a lot better with the tape and I'm just excited for the things to come. I told Sam I don't know what I'm more excited about getting my new door put in or getting the new walls put up for the closet pantry. It's so much more exciting things than just the floor coming up. Because the floor is done. Yes. Can we just like take a second and realize that? It's a little messy in here now, but you get the picture. Well, I have to say this has been a wonderful accomplishment, a lot for one day. Yes, it has been a heck of a work day. It doesn't help that it's 90 degrees, literally 90 degrees. But and it's very humid. <laughs> it is. However, you're right. The subfloor is done. It is. And that means that like the whole house has been done. At That's what point. I was just going through in my head. Like, are we really done? Like done, done? I think we've done pretty much the whole house now. We have. That's it. Let's, let's have a moment of silence here for the floor. Long gone is the sawdust. Because that's all it was. Sawdust floor. <laughs> <laughs> and we now have either OSB or Advantech or plywood. I think it's about half and half, but either way, nice. Nice accomplishment. Putting the subfloor under the wall, the first two pieces, pretty easy. That third one, pain. To say pain is an understatement. <laughs> uh, you win the awards of the day a couple times. You had some great ideas like hammering the pry bar under the wall to kind of help alleviate the pressure a little bit. It worked. And bringing me a block so I don't just bust the plywood into oblivion. I got tunnel vision. I was ready just to literally hammer it in and she was seeing that it was kind of getting mushroomed. So stepped in, put the sacrificial board in there and it made it a whole lot easier. It did. So while that was much more of a pain, and again, that's not what we normally did with our patch jobs and floor fixes, I'm glad that it's like that. Number one reason is because, like you said earlier, we're moving this door. 
So we wanted a 100% solid subfloor from joist to rim joist. Mm -hmm. And we have that now. We do. Well, I guess next time we will be getting into putting the new door in. Maybe. It's going to be weather depending. We're supposed to have like four or five days where there's a possibility of rain. And on those days, I don't want to open the wall. If we don't do the door install next, we definitely have some framing we can do here with the new pantry and closet. And there's some blocking and framing stuff to do with the laundry area, which um, in our last video I said stackable. And those, uh, apparently people took stackable as either the all-in-one units or the separate front loader washer dryer. Um, we have front loading washers and dryers that can be stacked. So that's what we're planning to do. So reuse. That's yeah, us. might as well. I mean, they're well, not I mean, new, but they still work last week. Yeah. Used them. <laughs> well, gosh, to get the front loaders and stuff now, you're going to drop a grand each. So yeah, forget about it. Mm -mm. So yes, we plan on stacking our washer and dryer there in the new laundry cubby. And I don't know. I'm excited. I am too. It, regardless, from here forward, we're not on the floor again. Yes. That's great. Until we're putting down flooring, and that's a whole nother oh, yeah. thing. It's a lot easier. Well, thanks for coming along as we got on the floor for the last time. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on the homestead. See you guys. Bye. So, we um, did stuff. I'm in a very gray mood today, aren't I? Gray hat, gray shirt, gray shorts, gray socks. Ow. Ah. Hang on. We don't, we're not in a rush. I don't have to hurry for it. I don't want well, you to get hurt. Getting red I'm always red faced. It's 90 degrees. I'm gray. Mm -hmm. Good day. Because I'm gray. Mm -hmm. Another oh, yeah. thing. It's a lot easier. Ball game. It's a whole other ball game, man. Yeah. Did on that movie? Mm. I think it's Alien. Darkness fades away. Huh? I'm talking to myself as I'm working on getting the camera set up. Alright. Hang on. Hang on. Wait. Camera. It's reality. Hey. Reality, everything stops for the camera. Well, so you guys can see what's going on, right? Okay, we'll try and slide it under here. There's not one underneath it. Kick it on out that way. 